In this demonstration, we will be showing the Veeam agent for IBM AIX. This will include identifying the correct Linux version as well as privileges, understanding the difference between the Veeam backup console and using the command line interface, as well as setting up the location for full and incremental backups. We'll also be showing how restore points are managed. Let's take a look at the demonstration. First, we will make sure that this is an AIX system by running the uname command and also check to make sure that it's the proper version. Next, we will run the whoami command to ensure we are logged in as root or a user with elevated root privileges. These two commands are very important to ensure that we're on the proper system as well as logged in with the proper permissions to be able to execute this command. Once we've checked both of these, we can now run the Veeam command. The Veeam command launches our backup console. This is where we can create our backups. The first option in the menu is to create a recovery CD. The ISO location is where I can burn off an ISO to a media format used for recovery. The temporary storage location has been changed from slash temp to slash backups as there is more space in that location. This CD has already been created, so we're just going to cancel and go back to the original menu. If you make a configuration change in the AIX system where you are using this Veeam agent, you will need to update these changes under the System Configuration menu. To update or create a new configuration, select the Create Configuration menu under System Configuration. At this point, we're going to back out of the System Configuration menu, go back to the Veeam Backup Console menu, and select Backup. The first option we see is the set backup location. This is where we will be storing the backup data. You may want to set up separate locations for your full and incremental backups. Once you've created your new backup location or locations, you can now go down to set the default backup location. It's currently set to repo as represented by the asterisk next to its name, which is what we wanted. Now we're going to exit out of backup location and we're going to move to the next menu, which is the Set Backup Retention. Here we've set the retention value to 7 for our incremental backups. The default is a little over 700, but we don't have that much room, so we're going to stay with 7. Next, we move on to Current Backup Selection. The Current Backup Selection is going to allow you to select what you'd want in your full backup. This includes allowing you to include or exclude certain folders. This does not apply to incremental backup. Incremental backup exclusions need to be done from the command prompt, which would be done outside of these menu systems. The current settings we've been showing so far have been in the Veeam interface. Let's view the current backup selection. This quickly shows the way it's currently configured. Let's go back to the backup menu. In the backup menu, we see the option to load backup selection or do a full backup. This is more like a Veeam Zip, which is a Veeam backup and replication feature, if you're familiar. This is more like a one-off ad hoc backup of the current system. The next option in the menu would be the incremental backup. Once we select this, this will start an incremental backup. Some files will be created during this incremental backup. These files include machine.snar, which is a snapshot metadata file. Another file is machine.tar.gz.2, also under forward slash backups forward slash AIX back. If we look at the bottom of the menu, we will see the window is showing the backup has finished. Let's exit out and take a look at the workload partitions menu. If you are using WPARs, you can backup and restore them from this interface. Let's go back. The Manage License menu allows you to manage the Veeam agent and even the IBM AIX license. You could even look at your log files from this menu. Let's exit out and take a look at the files that were created during that backup process. To do this, we'll run the change directory command and go to backslash backups, where we've stored the backup files. Best practice would be to store this information on a non-local resource like a separate NFS directory mount. This would ensure that you did not have a single point of failure. Let's take a look at the files in the directory. The first file to look at would be the dr.iso, which is the recovery media. Earlier in this demo, you may have noticed that when we looked at the recovery media options, there was a need for a temp directory. That location is Veeam RCD, which you will find right here. This is a temporary location for creating the recovery media. The next file we'll look at is the fullback.vtd, 
The VTD stands for Virtual Tape Drive. This is where we'll do the recovery from in just a moment. Next, we'll go into the subdirectory AIX back, which if you remember, we discussed earlier when we talked about the location of the backup files. So here, we're gonna put in change directory space AIX back. In this repository, we see the files we talked about earlier, including machine.snar, and if we list them, we'll also see the machine.tar files all listed in sequence. The first machine.tar.gz file is a full backup, kind of like a VBK file in Veeam. The files following this in order would be 0, 1, and 2. These would represent the incremental backup files. Now, something to be aware of. Once we reach a certain amount of restore points, the oldest incremental file being machine.tar.gz.0, in this example, will merge into the full backup file machine.tar.gz. This action is similar to the forever forward incremental process used in Veeam backup and replication. As mentioned earlier in this demonstration, we've also backed up the configuration. These files will be stored locally on the system itself where we'll find these files is under the Veeam CFG directory. So if we type in change directory space forward slash Veeam CFG, we'll be able to then change directory and then list these configuration files. The lone XML file in this list will contain the configuration information. This was to show you where these files currently reside, but you could change their location if you chose to. In many cases, recovery will be done from the command prompt, although you can use the Veeam user interface to recover from a full backup. For this demonstration, we need to create a situation in which we would need something to recover. So we're gonna go into a different directory, which is going to be reports. From the reports directory, we can run the list command so we can see that there are quite a few text files. For this example, we're going to remove a few of these text files. We're going to use the remove command to remove anything with a 4 or anything with a 5 after it. Once we've run these two commands, we want to double check to make sure that these files have been removed. Although we intentionally deleted these files, this is a scenario that you might see played out at any company on a given day where somebody may have accidentally deleted these files. So this gives us an opportunity to show you the tools that we can use to recover them. We're going to open the graphical UBAX tool by typing GRUBAX in the command line. Once we press enter, this will open the graphical interface we saw earlier. UBAX is the tool running behind the scene that does the backups. The first step is to define the location in which we would pull the recovery information from. To do this, we will go down and select backup locations. Once we select backup locations, we'll have a few options. The option we want to select is set default backup location. And for our example, we're going to select full backup. The next step is to find out where these files will be located within. To do this, we will go into the scripts option. From here, we will locate and select to edit the veeam.scp script. And now we'll see it on the screen. The first thing we need to locate are the S numbers, better known as sequence numbers. The full backup itself of the slash directory is located under the S number one. And you'll see here below that it shows right here the subdirectories. If you go above, it'll show the S number zero and this is where the configuration file information will be. And if you go to the bottom, S number two is where the log files will be. For our purposes, we're gonna be looking for data under the S number one, but we wanted to give an example of where you would find the sequence numbers if you wanted to get configuration file or log file information as well. So let's leave that menu. Now we'll exit this menu, go to the top and select executive, and then we'll scroll down to the option to restore selection. We could do a full restore, but for this demonstration, we're just gonna do individual recoveries. Now that we found our full backup file, we can go down the list and select our home directory. And from here, we can then select the directory that we know holds all the report files. And you'll see right here, it shows reports. Now we can see those individual report files. We deleted file four and five. So this will give us a chance to be able to select only file four and five from this list to recover. Once we execute, then we can go back through the menus and we will see in this prompt 
that we have recovered those two files. From here, we can back our way out of Goobax until we get back to a prompt. And once we get to that prompt, we can run a list command to see if those files have been returned to their original location. So under the reports, we do a list and we see right here that file four and five have been restored. This completes our demonstration for the Veeam agent for IBM AIX. We hope you enjoyed this and please look for more how-to videos in the near future.